What can you do with $100? Well, the answer to that is actually quite a lot if you're willing to turn trash into treasure. Welcome back to season two of the $100 Flip Up Challenge, where the last time we did this challenge, we came into flipping our way up all the way to an RTX 3080 gaming PC, and the season ended up finishing with a massive success. This time, however, we are going into a much more difficult market, especially because of all the inflation that has occurred since we did season one. However, that is not going to deter us from looking for the absolute best bargains. And starting out this season, I have to find something that is going to be netting me a solid profit if I'm then to continue and start making my way up to a high-end gaming PC. So with that aside, let's check out what's on the market and see what we can get with $100. And to be frank, the first episode requires the best in micromanagement. So let's go see what we can find and hopefully get lucky. Are you tired of seeing this annoying activate Windows message? Then if so, today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get activated today. Works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in the description below. So we're going to be starting off this one with one of the biggest gambles where we are now in a car park and we've just picked up a deal which we we're looking for all morning. We we're looking for that one deal and I think I have found it. It is a PC that's completely like he doesn't guarantee it basically. The person who sold it to me, I'm guessing that's why they met me in the car park. They just don't want to hear about this PC after they sold it to me now. So they had it listed for a hundred bucks. They said they didn't know what it was. And so I offered them $70 since I saw the photos and it looks like it might be a DDR4 error. And so if I can clean this thing up and some of these parts work, then of course I'll be coming out a bit more than $70. So that's what I'm hoping for since they have mounted a massive cooler on it. It looks like it could be an i7 inside. Obviously the graphics card, there's no high expectations here, but I'm hoping that some of these parts will end up working and I can perhaps turn that $70 into, say maybe if I'm lucky, $200. So that's fingers crossed if I can clean up some of this stuff right here. But it's funny how they met me in a car park. I just find that, <laughs> that kind of ironic where, and the story behind this PC was that they had it sitting in their garage for a couple of years, but I'm pretty sure they just pulled this thing from a tip and then they took it home and obviously they're meeting me at a car park now because they just don't want anyone knowing where they live and whatnot. So that's fair enough. Uh, of course, there's always that other option where I generally, I will never pick up parts that are advertised as working uh, from a car park or a gas station as I've done in the past with a video. But this one here, when I met up with a guy, he said, look, I don't know if any of this works. And so he's just being honest and I'm looking at it thinking, well, if the parts don't work, it's probably because they're not faulty. It's just because they've been sitting in a bad environment for so long. So what I'm hoping here is, is that some of the parts do work because it's just dirty. And I'm one thing I can do really well is clean these parts up. So what we're gonna do right now is take this thing home. <laughs> I guess that's what you could call it, thing. And we're gonna get to work and start cleaning it down. Now we're back at the Tech Yes studio and here is where all the fun begins, where I'm gonna pull apart this whole thing and I don't think we can be reusing this case. There's no side panels, it's banged up, but I think if we can restore this Noctua cooler and also find out what CPU we've got and see what RAM we've got, also see what the graphics card is and see if we can get these parts working, we'll be sitting on a good individual parts flip here. So out of all this, and my thinking, you're probably like, Brian, you're buying a PC that the chances are like nothing could work. And actually, if you look at the chances here, I would say the chances are that something will work. I mean, we've got a cooler. That's, I'm, that's definitely going to work. We've got um, two sticks of memory. We've got a CPU, a motherboard, a graphics card, and also a power supply. So that's six individual pieces. The chances of all that being completely faulty is very low in my opinion. So 
when you take gambles with this kind of stuff, for me, this is actually really good because I think that the person selling it doesn't know what works and what doesn't, which means that we've got an opportunity here to actually get a lot of value out of this. So let's pull this thing apart, see what we've got, and then start cleaning. So there's some good and bad news after pulling this thing apart. The good news is that this is a GTX 980. So uh, it could have been a 980 or a 970. So it's great if it's a 980 and it works. Bad news is it was an i5 and not an i7. It's an i5 6600K. I was hoping that it would be either an i7 6700K or 7700K. But regardless, what we're gonna do now is since there is so much debris on this stuff, like fur. So whoever, wherever this was sitting, it, it was just sitting with like, I would guess the amount of fur here, dogs that were just constantly molting near the PC. So what we're gonna do is, before we chuck all this stuff in the ultrasonic cleaner to clean it all down, I'm actually gonna use some uh, wipes to get all the sort of excess off these parts just so my ultrasonic cleaner doesn't get clogged up. And then after that, once all the parts are clean, we can then turn around and see what works and what doesn't work. Because I'm not gonna boot this stuff up in its current condition, because that in itself could risk destroying the parts. And also in this case, we will quickly pull out the fans too, while the ultrasonic cleaner is going and clean these fans up. So we just finished pulling these parts out of the ultrasonic cleaner. I mean, just look at these, this Noctua fan, for example. This has just come up so clean. But what we're gonna do right now is since there's still water on these parts, I'm gonna have to go over them and blow out all the water. And this takes a good 20 minutes, but also I'll have to take things like this little CPU socket cover off this motherboard just to make sure every last drop is out. And then after that, we're gonna coat it all down and finally, start uh, turning this stuff on and seeing if it works. And then if it does work, we've still got another step after that, 
and that is to replace these pads on these heat sinks here because unfortunately they've they did come up okay it's just they've got a little bit too much like micro dust on the edges of the pads and i'm i just i'm not comfortable uh, putting that back on if the motherboard works So we've just finished drying off all these PC parts and we're gonna start testing now with the power supply first because if the power supply works, then we can use that as the base to test out everything else like our motherboard, our graphics cardo, and I'm hoping for the best now because this stuff, I mean, before it came in to a Tech ES loving session, it was looking really bad. But now this stuff is looking brandy new. So we have got some really good news and that is our power supply is working absolutely fine. There is some bad news though. I don't know which one to plug this SATA cable up to since it does have like a black head on it, but I tried plugging that into the black port on the modular on this power supply and the whole power supply test had turned off. So I'm just gonna go back, watch the video later and then get that SATA connection in the right port. But it's not that important because with these cables right here, we can test all the rest of the gear the next thing to do is patch up our graphics card all the way back up together with new thermal paste and all that stuff. But we're gonna be actually reusing these thermal pads since one of the sides has a bit of dirt on them. But if we just get that dirt off and then we use the other clean side, then we should be okay. And now it's finally time for the moment of truth. And this is, we're just gonna go in, all in here and test the CPU, RAM, motherboard, and the graphics card all at the same time. Since I was pretty confident after testing that power supply. So let's go. Give me a signal. signal keyboard is not lighting up Bang. Woo! that is right there what it's all about we have the GTX 980 I'm still gonna do more tests on this but it's giving out a signal we're getting into the BIOS and nothing is shut off. So this is really good news. We've got a 6600K, 16 gigabytes of RAM, Z170, a Zeus, I think it's called Pro Gaming Motherboard. This, like, we are in the best case scenario here. This is phenomenal because we can now, just this is, when you get into the first episode, and you got a hundred bucks and you're riding on this kind of, like this is really lucky. So 
Oh, let's um, I'm gonna do one more final test, and that's hook this up to another PC, the GTX 980, because I've got a bit of a plan coming in now on what I'm gonna do with these parts, because we've got the basis for a gaming PC right here, but we've only got thirty dollars left now to get a case and an SSD if we wanted to just do a whole gaming PC flip. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's test this graphics card out on another PC. Make sure it's like you can install the drivers on it. And then it also runs a benchmark. And then we'll be in a much better spot. So our GTX 980 has installed the drivers absolutely fine. And it is running really well, actually. It's quiet and the temperatures are really good. So this is the best case scenario that could have happened today. But what we're going to do right now is I'm actually going to film. So I'm going to clean these parts up. I'm going to fix the motherboard up with some thermal pads. And then we're going to shoot a little bit of before and after. And then we're going to come back with the master plan here. So after cleaning all those parts up and tasting crazy success, <laughs> this kind of success just doesn't usually happen. But I'm really glad it happened where I really needed it to count. And this $70 that we got here today, we're just turning this into that baseline money where i've then got options because coming in under 100 bucks i've really only got one shot to make it work and so the plan going forward now is since that gtx 980 works i mean that alone if i got that for 70 dollars cleaned it up and reflipped it that would be a great base starting point anyhow but then we've got a motherboard a noctua cooler 16 gigabytes of ram we've also got some SATA cables too which i've pulled out and I can use that for a gaming PC. And then we've got three fans on top of that, Corsair fans and an 850 watt power supply. And there's even a Wi-Fi card that I'm yet to test. And that was thrown in too. So the value we got here for 70 bucks was absolutely incredible. And the reason we get this kind of value out of this stuff was you just have to take one look at the PC and the photo and you realize not a whole lot of people want to get their hands dirty. And they probably don't want to touch this because maybe all the bacteria in there, there might be, you know, all that fur. They don't, they just don't know me. I just don't care. And so <laughs> I just clean this stuff and I love cleaning it and just seeing what the end product like. It's like I can visualize what the end product is going to be. Of course, I can't tell if it's going to work or not, but that's the whole, I guess, fun in doing this. And so going forward, we're going to be uh, selling that GTX 980. So this is going to be my plan because for the next episode, we're gonna come back and then we're gonna have a gaming PC ready to flip. And then we'll start off with the next bunch of cash and we can start flipping our way up. But what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna list the GTX 980 for 300 Aussie dollars. And I'm gonna try and get close to that. And then that money that I get from that, and because we got $30 left over roughly, I can then use that 330 to go get a case, RGB case, an SSD and a hard drive, and also a lower tiered GPU, and build out a whole gaming PC that we can then use to flip and get ourselves into, say, over roughly five, six hundred dollars, which then gives us a much healthier baseline with more choices. And I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. I was meant to start filming this series last month, but I was looking all month for that one deal under a hundred Aussie dollars that would catapult me and allow me to sort of have a high chance of continuing the series. But I just didn't find that deal last month. And this month it came along and that's what it's all about, being patient, especially if you're on a real low budget and you wanna make it work, you've gotta know what to look out for. And unfortunately, I mean, it is unfortunate because a lot of people, I guess, don't maybe they don't like cleaning stuff in the PC world, they don't like testing stuff out, but unfortunately it, unfortunate for me is that I find all the better deals I get are just the completely trash stuff and it's always filthy from the get-go so the filthier it is usually the cheaper it is and the more potential once I clean it up there is to make profit and that was pretty much this deal in a nutshell here today it ended up just working out perfectly I can't believe everything worked <laughs> that just doesn't really happen at all here at Tech Yes City every piece worked so that's just an absolute win starting off 
with this $100 flip up challenge. Now, of course, I will add things. You may have noticed in the price list, I'm adding in thermal pads. I've added in a can of water dispersant. I even added in my gas costs. I drove 10 kilometers. So people want me to start adding in those costs that I incur as well. So I will throw those costs in and we're gonna start trying to flip our way up to get that high-end gaming rig. And who knows how long it'll take, but I think the process is gonna start moving a lot faster now because under $100, it's really hard to get something to reflip and make money on. You've got to be patient, you've got to wait, and that's exactly what we did. We waited here like that cobra ready to pounce on its prey, and we came up with a lot of prey, actually. I think we uh, bit off more than we can chew, but we made up for that for just chewing a lot faster and uh, cleaning all the stuff up really quick. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this first episode here and we're gonna come back, make sure you stay subbed and ring that bell for episode two when it drops because I will give you guys an update on the listing. I'm gonna put the listing up for the GTX 980, then I'm gonna get the parts and episode two is going to be a lot of fun. And this series, honestly, this is what it's all about at Tech S City. This series right here is what I'm all about. I've, this is one of my most passionate hobbies in anything I do with used stuff, whether it's used car parts, which I did back in the day, or now use PC tech. I love turning the trash into treasure, especially the dirtier it is. I don't know, for me, the dirtier it is, the better it is. And it's just, it's just absolute bliss, man. Absolute bliss when you get all the stuff working. So what an absolute win. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below if you maybe think I should take a different path of trajectory with the parts that we got here, and what would you do? So I love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which actually comes from the previous video we did on the B660 Soyo motherboard, and it's from Crash Pilot 1000 and they ask, good to see that Soyo is still kicking, maybe they plan a comeback to rival the current big shots. And at what Soyo brought to the market, or Soyo, I actually don't even know how to pronounce it, apologize for that, uh, what Soyo brought to the market with, the, with these motherboards in 6th six, uh, six generation Intel, or wait, no, 6th generation motherboard. <laughs> Sorry, we, we did 12th generation Intel, 600 series motherboards. What they brought to the table was a really solid board for a really solid price. And I think the market really likes that. So I can see them, if they keep this stuff up, and they keep this up with what they're doing with these B660, for example, they're gonna have a really uh, solid base, a user base on their hands. So people are gonna to wanna to buy these motherboards knowing how well they perform, especially with non-K CPUs. And even like the uh, 12 core, 12700F for example, that'll work absolutely fine, 12600K, that'll all work fine with these B660s. And I think once people realize that, wow, I can get an entry level B660 board and still get that sort of higher endish CPU and it's gonna work absolutely fine. It's actually gonna be really good then I think people are gonna start realizing, hey, Soyo is not a bad brand. And so as long as they're bringing the value for money in the competition, then they're gonna come out ahead. So hopefully that answers that question for you guys. And with all that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.